What if everything you thought about aging is wrong? For decades, we've believed that getting older is something you just have to accept. Wrinkles, aches, chronic illnesses, they're simply part of the package. But what if I told you that science is starting to show convincingly that you can slow down your body's actual aging clock and that the key is not expensive procedures or miraculous pills, but three simple everyday habits that you can start right now. There's a groundbreaking new study just published in Nature Aging, and what it found was that specific doses of omega-3, a daily vitamin D supplement, and just 30 minutes of basic strength training a few times per week can actually slow down your biological aging as measured by your DNA. Now, just know that this is not just about how you look or how you feel, but it's about how your cells are aging on the inside. So stick around because today I'm breaking down this revolutionary trial, what it means for your health, and how you can put these powerful habits into action starting today. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi, board certified in nephrology and obesity medicine. And today I'm going to break down the facts, the myths, and the most common questions about anti-aging and biological age. So let's dive in. What is biological age and why does it matter? Well, we all know our birthday, but do you know your biological age? Unlike your chronological age, your biological age, it actually reflects how well or how fast your body is actually aging at the cellular level. Scientists have used epigenetic clocks that analyze DNA methylation tiny chemical tags on your genes to measure this. So if you could slow your biological age, you might not just live longer, you'd live healthier with fewer chronic diseases and a better, higher quality of life. Let's dive into the DO Health trial, the who, the what, and the how of this study. So the DO Health study is Europe's largest trial on healthy aging. They had 2,157 healthy active adults, age 70 plus, came from five countries, eight treatment arms, and a three-year follow-up. The interventions were one gram of algae-based omega-3 daily, 2,000 international units of vitamin D3 daily, strength training of 30 minutes three times per week, or all possible combinations, including placebo. And participants' bloods was analyzed for epigenetic changes at the beginning and the end of the study using four advanced biological clocks. So let me just give you a quick guide on these biological clocks before we continue. So the first one is phenoage. The full name is DNA methylation phenoage. And what it measures is basically it estimates biological age by combining DNA methylation patterns with clinical markers related to mortality risk like blood sugar, inflammation, immune function. And so it can help to predict health span, disease span, and overall lifespan. Number two is Grim Age. And the full name is DNA Methylation Grim Age, with the study in question today using Grim Age 2, which is an updated version. And so what it measures is methylation patterns that are associated with blood plasma proteins and smoking history. And it's especially good at predicting time of death and the risk of age-related diseases. And so Grim Age 2 is the next generation version of Grim Age. It's got improved accuracy and it has some additional methylation markers. And so for prediction, it helps with mortality, morbidity risk, and has better performance than the original Grim Age. And finally, number four is Dundin Pace. And all of these fancy names, if you butcher them or if I butcher them, forgive me, so Dundin pace of aging computed from the epigenome, so that's all the mnemonic for it, but essentially what it measures is the rate at which you are aging, not just your biological age, but essentially a speedometer for your aging process. And so what it predicts is whether you're aging faster or slower than the average person your age. These tools are essentially the gold standard in aging research. They're powerful, but they're not perfect. All right, so let's get back to the study. So what did the study actually find? So here's the key results. Omega-3s alone at one gram per day, they slowed biological aging on three 
out of the four clocks by about 2.9 to 3.8 months over three years. Combining omega-3 with vitamin D and strength training, the effect was even greater. It was additive for one clock, the pheno age clock. And vitamin D and strength training, now this didn't slow aging clocks alone, but it boosted the effects when combined with omega-3. So the biggest benefits in this study were seen in those who started with lower omega-3 levels in their blood. And what it basically tells you is that even a small shift in biological age could add up to meaningful extra years of health and health span along with lifespan over one's entire lifetime. So now let's get into some common questions that I get asked all the time. Number one, what kind of omega-3 was used in this study and can I use fish oil or plant-based supplements? Well, this particular study used one gram per day of algae-based omega-3. If you watch some of my other videos, when I talk about omega-3s, the data is really between one to two grams. And remember, omega-3s provide EPA and DHA. And you can watch the other omega-3 video, I'll have the link for you, that goes into detail on what EPA and DHA is. But the same heart-healthy fats that are found in fatty fish, you can get them from other sources. So from a fish perspective, if you eat fish two to three times per week, you may get enough. But for many people, especially vegetarians, Algae oil is a great option. Plant sources like flaxseed contain ALA, but ALA is not converted as efficiently over into EPA and DHA. And so this is why when you're talking about sources of omega-3, from a plant-based perspective, algae oil seems great. From an animal-based perspective, fish, if you're able to consume it, also seems great. Next question is, what is the right dose of vitamin D and omega-3? So once again, vitamin D3 in this particular study was 2,000 international units. It's higher than the 800 international units commonly recommended. We did another study just recently <clears throat> where I talked about when you look at vitamin D3, going above 4,000 international units is generally not recommended. If you're going to take it, 5,000 is really the max you want to take. With omega-3s, in this study was one gram daily, ideally EPA and DHA from algae or fish oil supplements. But in other studies, the sweet spot is between one gram to two gram. There wasn't any additional benefits after two grams. Another question that I get asked is, are these interventions safe and who should avoid them? Well, for most healthy adults, these are very safe interventions that are dose studies. So in other words, omega-3s, you have to understand there's a slight increased risk of bleeding, especially if you're on blood thinner. So in other words, if you're on any medications, ask your doctor. With vitamin D, remember in kidney patients, we worry because vitamin D can increase calcium absorption and that calcium can lead to hypercalcemia and that can be an issue. So if you have chronic kidney disease, you got to check with your doctor first. Question number four is, should I get my blood levels of vitamin D or omega-3s checked before supplementing? So in general, yes, it's smart because what you're trying to find out is where do you stand? Remember, the biggest anti-aging effect was seen in people who started with the lowest omega-3 levels. There's a simple blood test for 25-hydroxyvitamin D that's very widely available. The omega-3 index is not as easily available. But when you're thinking about supplementing, as long as you don't have a lot of medications and your doctor is okay, you can start with omega-3 at a gram and you can start with vitamin D at 2,000 international units. Now, question number five, can younger people benefit from these habits or is it only for those who are over the age of 40? Well, the study that we looked at, it was looking at you know, people over the age of 40, but the interventions are safe and likely beneficial for younger folks too, especially if you have any metabolic conditions, heart or kidney issues. So starting earlier may actually give you more long-term benefits. Question number six, how do these interventions compare to things like intermittent fasting, calorie restriction or metformin? So the only other intervention that has been shown to slow aging clocks in humans is calorie restriction. And that was seen in the calorie trial using the Dundon Pace 
And so when you're talking about omega-3, vitamin D, and strength training, the advantage of them is that they're more accessible. They have broader health benefits. It's not to say fasting or calorie restriction can't be done, but you want to think about everything as a tool in your tool belt. There's no single tool that's a super tool, but all of these in combinations can help. Now, when it comes to things like metformin, NAD boosters, or anti-aging supplements, they don't necessarily outperform these simple interventions for healthy aging. So before you spend your hard-earned money on NAD boosters, think about simple things like vitamin D, omega-3s, and strength training. Question number seven that I get is how reliable are these epigenetic clocks? Should I get mine tested? Well, these clocks are the best scientific tools we have for measuring biological aging at this time, but they're still evolving. Now, they're most useful for research and clinical studies, but not really for individual predictions. So if you get tested, remember, lifestyle matters far more than the number itself. Question eight. Can you just take higher doses for more effect? So remember, more is not better. Higher doses of omega-3s or vitamin D may increase side effects without additional benefits. Remember with vitamin D, between 4,000 to 5,000 IU is really the ceiling of where the benefit lies. After that, it actually makes things worse. With omega-3, there wasn't any additional benefit beyond two grams. And so, this is just based on the studies that we have talked about. And so then comes the question of, well, what about the different types? Remember, quality matters, potency matters. So just because you got two grams of fish oil doesn't mean you have two grams of omega-3s. So purity, quality matters. And if it's a company that doesn't do third-party testing, if there's heavy metal contamination, mercury, lead, cadmium, arsenic, etc., all of those things could make it so that you're not getting the full benefit. Question number nine is, how long do you have to keep this up to see the results? And what happens if you stop? So in this case, the study track changes over three years, but the benefits likely depend on sustained habits. If you stop, your biological aging clock could then, of course, start to speed up again. Like most things in life, consistency is key. Consistency will beat out motivation day in, day out. Habits will beat out motivation day in, day out. Question number 10 is, how can I start strength training safely at home, especially if I'm older or never exercise? Listen, you can start as simple as possible. If you're able to sit in a chair and stand up, well, that's a squat. Repeat it. So body weight squats are great. If you want to be even more basic, wall push-ups, to just start with push-ups on a wall, you can get resistance bands at any store for very inexpensive price and start with five minutes. Aim to build up to 30 minutes three times per week. And of course, if you have health issues and so forth, talk to your doctor. Question 11, does genetics matter more or can lifestyle really change your aging? Well, genetics, you know, they set the baseline, but lifestyle changes like those in this study they can shift your biological age and reduce your risk of chronic diseases. Once again, the sooner you start, the bigger the payoff. Question 12. Do these habits help with specific diseases like kidney disease, heart disease, dementia? And the answer is yes. In the Do Health study that we're talking about, these same interventions, they reduce falls, infections, frailty, invasive cancer, Omega-3s and vitamin D are both linked to heart and brain benefits. And as a nephrologist, I can tell you that these habits support kidney health too. Inflammation is one of the key drivers of kidney disease, and both omega-3s and vitamin D help to lower that inflammation. All right, let's bring all of this information together for some take-home messages. So can you really slow your body's aging clock? So far, with the best scientific evidence we have to date, yes. And it doesn't take much. In this particular study, it was a gram of omega-3s, EPA, DHA daily, 2,000 IUs of vitamin D3 daily, and 30 minutes of strength training three times per week. Now, these are very simple, accessible habits that aren't dependent on how rich you are, what's your background like. This is accessible to just about everybody. and Keep in mind that it's not just 
about your epigenetic clock, but it's also about lowering the risk of real diseases such as cancer, kidney disease, heart disease, strokes, etc. But most importantly, it's also about helping you keep your independence as you get older. I want to thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you found this video helpful, hit that like and subscribe button and share with your colleague. As always, I end my videos by saying always express kindness. The world needs much more kindness than anything else. On top of expressing kindness to others is show kindness and gratitude to yourself by expressing love to yourself, by working out and taking care of the body. This is the only vessel we got for the life that we have. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you guys next time.